What does geometry sound like? The answer is music, because music is audible geometry. And by the end of this video, you'll know exactly what that means, and how to use it to unlock music theory and the art of songwriting. But first to clarify, when I say that music is geometry, by geometry, I don't mean you have to do a bunch of math, like you don't have to get out a protractor or calculate the hypotenuse of a triangle or anything like that. Geometry here just refers to circles, squares, triangles, hexagons, and stuff like this. Simple patterns and shapes that are symmetrical, consistent, and predictable. That give music order and structure, and that explain why music sounds so good. Because everything in music, all of music theory, is built on a framework of geometry. Here I'm going to show you how this geometry applies to music, not only in theory, but also how it applies to actual instruments like the guitar. But first, to help make what sounds like an abstract concept more concrete, in the 18th century, the German poet Johann Goethe famously said that architecture is frozen music. And while on the surface this idea sounds pretty and merely poetic, it's actually a really good insight into the nature of music and how it's geometrically structured at its core. In architecture, it's easy to observe this structure. Rooms, buildings, bridges, and towers are literally structures made of lines and angles and patterns that are fundamentally geometric. And because we can see them, these structures are tangible, made of concrete, steel, or glass. And since they're stationary or frozen in space, as Goethe said, architecture is clearly a kind of geometry. You can just see it. But because music or sound is invisible and songs are fluid and that they move through time, the geometry of music can seem harder to observe. It's more elusive. But it most definitely is geometric, as you will see for yourself. And to do this, to capture the geometry of music, to freeze it in its tracks, and to cast light on it so that it's visible, we're going to use color, which will vividly reveal this geometric framework. And you can just hear it in music, this order and structure, which is why we enjoy listening to it, just like you can appreciate the beauty of a building. By picturing the patterns of music using color, it's like throwing a bucket of paint on the invisible man to trace his steps, observe his actions, and see how he was hiding in plain sight all along. And like I say, the geometry that appears then directly informs how to play instruments and write music. So to start, we begin with the 12 fundamental notes of the chromatic scale. You can repeat these notes in different octaves on an instrument, but because they repeat, cycling through the same set of notes, they essentially form an endless loop like this that musicians call pitch space. And here's where it gets interesting, because this arrangement of notes allows us to really focus on and understand the relationships between notes, which happen to be geometric. And it's these relationships between the notes that are really what matter and what music is all about. As the French composer Claude Debussy once said, music is the space between the notes. And this is what he meant. Music isn't so much about the sounds themselves or any of the individual pitches. Music only has meaning in the space between the notes, that is, in the intervals or connections that exist between the notes. So looking at pitch space like this, most people focus on the pitches or content of sound, what we actually hear. Although real insight comes instead when you turn your attention to the space or context around the various notes. That's what really matters. Now this is definitely a paradigm shift and a heady kind of abstract idea, but you can think of it like this. If the notes in music are like planets and intervals are like the void of space, then you can see how the space is necessary to give the planets meaning. You need the absence of physical matter, space, to give the physical matter, planets, meaning and context. And the same is true for notes and intervals. Notes are great, but the real energy of music comes from the intervals between those notes. Music would be nothing without these intervals. So with this in mind, the next step is to look more closely at these intervals, which happen to be geometric, because they're consistent and symmetrical between all of the notes. But to picture everything more clearly, more vividly, let's first add color to this diagram of pitch space, which will help a lot. And to do this, to add color, all we have to do is rearrange this chromatic scale pattern into the circle of fifths, which is another pattern in music that shows how all of the notes are harmonically related. In other videos, I explain the circle of fifths in much more detail, but the point here is that in this formation, each note is now positioned next to the other notes that are closely related musically, which we can illustrate using the color wheel like this, where C, for example, is red, next to its harmonic fifth, G, red orange, which is next to its harmonic fifth, D, orange, then A, orange yellow, E, yellow, etc. 
The circle of fifths and the color wheel follow the exact same pattern. They are the same pattern. And together they combine to show how all of the notes in music are related to one another. So that even when we rotate the circle of fifths back into the chromatic scale, these harmonic relationships are still baked into the notes so that the connections between pitches, the intervals between them, are no longer invisible. For example, it's now plain to see how the C note, red, is closely related to F, purple red, and G, red orange. Because even though they're physically separated in the chromatic scale like this, they're musically close because of their close proximity in the circle of fifths, where these notes are next door neighbors. But in the rearranged pattern of the chromatic scale, they're spaced out, but still connected musically. And the same symmetrical relationship is true for all of the other notes too, where each note shares special connections with others in the chromatic scale, based on how they were all situated in the circle of fifths, which the colors reveal in a way that letter names alone never could. But here's where it gets really cool. Actually, it's already objectively cool, all of these natural patterns in music, but it gets even more interesting. Already, you can see how these colors within pitch space are starting to reveal the importance of intervals in music and how they give meaning to the notes. In other words, it's more clear now that the space of pitch space is where the real energy of music happens more than with the pitches themselves because the context of notes or how the various notes relate to one another gives meaning to them. In music, context intervals inform the content notes. And what's beautiful is that the colors illuminate more than just intervals of a fifth, but all geometric relationships between all notes in every key. And here's how. Let's take the C major scale, for example, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and the intervals or scale degrees in this pattern are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Already, you can see how the tonic, or scale degree one, is closely connected to intervals four and five because of the proximity of these notes in the circle of fifths. But this is also true of the other notes in this pattern, where D, two, is related to G, five, and A, six in the same way, and E, three, is related to A, six, and B, seven. All of these notes in this scale sound compatible because the major scale itself is really just a rearranged segment of the circle of fifths, where these pitches were once neighbors in this pattern, which is why they share a special bond with one another even after they've been rotated into the chromatic scale. So these geometric connections between notes reach out, almost like gravity across the expanse of space, linking them harmonically despite their distance. It's awesome. But like I say, these colors highlight more than just the intervals of fourths and fifths. Looking still at the key of C as our example, with C as one, and filling in all of the scale degree numbers, so not just those of the major scale, but also flat two, flat three, flat five, flat six, and flat seven, you can see how the colors correspond with every interval in a key, and that they highlight symmetrical geometric patterns within it. Like how the tonic, scale degree one, is directly opposite interval flat five. Together, these two notes form a dissonant pair of what are called tritones in music, also known as complementary colors in the language of color, in this case red and green. But whatever you call them, they are polar opposites in pitch space directly across from each other within a key. Flanking the tritone, as you've seen, are intervals four and five, which are harmonically close to the tonic due to their proximity in the circle of fifths, as the colors highlight. Next, on either side of those, are scale degrees three and flat six, that together with the tonic, form a perfect triangle of primary colors. Then next to those notes are scale degrees flat three and six, which together with the tonic and its tritone, form a perfect square of two perpendicular tritones, all evenly spaced within the chromatic scale. Then we have intervals 2 and flat 7, each spaced a whole step away on either side of the tonic, forming part of a perfect hexagon of whole step intervals in the chromatic scale. And then on either side of the tonic, interval 1, are scale degrees flat 2 and 7, two notes that are closely related to the tonic's tritone, flat 5, and therefore fairly dissonant with the tonic, in which are part of a dodecagon of half step intervals in pitch space that's also just known as the chromatic scale. In the key of C, where C, red, is the tonic, or scale degree one, this is what the geometry of intervals sounds like. And since music is symmetrical, in that any note can be the tonic, or scale degree one, these same geometric relationships are present in each key, whether it's the key of D flat, or D, or E flat, or E, etc. 
These patterns are consistent across all 12 keys, resulting in an intricate web of relationships where the harmonic connections between all of the notes and musical keys are intertwined. And what's cool is that every pattern in music is then informed by these geometric patterns, including scales, like this C major scale, formed by a series of whole step and half step intervals, which are really just segments of the underlying hexagon and dodecagon of seconds and sevenths that you saw before, as well as all of the different modes in music that are also built on the same framework of geometric patterns. Or looking at chords formed from tertian intervals, these harmonies are actually just audible portions of geometric triangles and squares of musical thirds and sixths. And in music, progressions likewise naturally move through harmonic connections of fourths and fifths, as shown in this circle of fifths chord map that I explain in other videos. All of these patterns, scales, modes, chords, and progressions, they're all built on this underlying framework of geometry that you can clearly see using color. And even if you remove the color, these connections are still there, they still exist. They're just a lot harder to see, which brings us to an important point. And that is that these colors and shapes, these squares and circles of alternating notes that highlight all of the intervals and relationships between pitches, they pack a one-two punch. Because not only do they distinguish each individual note more clearly than the letter names alone, but they also reveal the harmonic connections between the notes, all of the intervals in music, better than the scale degree symbols that are traditionally used. In other words, they represent both the notes themselves, the content of sound, and intervals, or the surrounding context, that gives these notes meaning, all in a single streamlined interface. And with this more powerful and intuitive way to picture music, it's much easier to understand theory for songwriting. In fact, these colors make it surprisingly easy to navigate any key because of how they highlight the consistent framework of geometry that links everything together. For example, looking at this summary of patterns in the key of C, as you saw before, with C as the tonic, or scale degree one, the various intervals around the tonic form different geometric shapes. Tritones, major thirds and minor sixths, and major seconds and minor sevenths are all found in this grouping of whole step intervals. While the intervals of fourths and fifths, minor thirds and major sixths, and minor seconds and major sevenths, they're all spaced out in this other set of intervals. So when scale degree one is C, like this red square here, based on the geometric framework of music as these colors and shapes show, all of the other notes and the relationships to that tonic are immediately known. Intervals two, three, flat five, flat six, and flat seven are arranged in hexagons, triangles, and asterisk shaped patterns in relation to the tonic, while intervals flat two, flat three, four, five, six, and seven form patterns of a dodecagon, square, and star. And what's more is that once you've learned these patterns in one key, you've already learned them for all 12 keys since this single geometric framework is shared by all of the keys. So when G becomes the tonic, for example, when we shift the numbers so that one aligns with G, the same relative positioning of notes and intervals is also the same as the colors show, as is also the case when D is one, so even when we shift one to align with D, making D the tonic, these same underlying patterns apply. It's the same patterns. And this is also true when A is one, and when E becomes the tonic, and so on. All 12 keys, again, share this same common framework of geometric connections, making it super easy to master music theory. And naturally, these patterns apply to any instrument, whether it's the piano, or the ukulele, or the guitar, or whatever, really. But these geometric connections are, of course, more than just pretty patterns. They totally inform how to play music, how to build scales and modes and chords and progressions, which you then use to create music. And I have a whole playlist here on the channel that explores all of these geometric symmetries on the guitar fretboard in particular, so you can quickly master the instrument and navigate it with ease. There's a link to this video playlist in the notes, and you can also find all of these diagrams we looked at here in the community, as well as a full course on music theory Theory with thousands of diagrams, hours of video, PDFs, and lots of good stuff if you want to check that out. A link to that is also in the notes. So thank you for watching. Please let the algorithm know if you liked it. I also invite you to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video.